Second and five for the Blazers, under five to snap it. Johnson gets it off. Hayden again, bounces outside, has room. And Key eventually brings him down with some late arriving help from Demetrius Kane, but not before Hayden picks up a first down on a gain of eight. Good run call again. They're being really creative with these runs with that bump motion again, giving the Hilltoppers confusion. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Clayton White, hopefully it's not a little too late, but he's got to make some adjustments here to that bump uh, from the back. Hayden was nominated this week for the Mayo Clinic Comeback Player of the Year in college football after he missed all of last season with a torn ACL that he suffered in the final day of bowl prep for the Bahamas Bowl in 2017. Uh, play action. Johnston looked deep. Comes back to the opposite side for Mitchell and a, make that Watkins Great well cover. overthrew him. Good coverage by Trey Meadows. Great coverage down the field. Didn't really have anything. He's looking for that one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's the third time he's done that on those go routes. Trying to look for a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Hilltoppers kind of look like they've been coached to understand that the, this, if he sees one-on-one, -on -one, he's going that way. They were on top of that receiver, uh, making it very hard to make a perfect throw. Be, be, be skeptical here now. We, there's got to be an adjustment. It's something talked about at half. Maybe a back shoulder fade instead of a kind of a go ball to kind of lead their receiver. Might, maybe a back shoulder fades the answer. Second down, play action toward Hayden. Johnson looks back to him. It's oh. intercepted. Jeremy Darvin. Sniffed it out. 305 pound redshirt junior has the interception. Western Kentucky went three games without one in two quarters. The Hilltoppers have two tonight and they're set up inside the 30 yard line. Wow, great read. He sniffed that one out from the beginning. I thought it was a good, good play call. I guess not, very good, good read by the D tackle, kind of coming back there and seeing screen, reacting to it. And he just threw it right to him. Big boy with the big hands, I love it. Good decision by Darvin, too, to tuck that. You saw initially he was holding it out in his left hand, and I'm sure Jonathan Hayden would have been ball hunting. He, he, he looked like he knew what he was doing with that ball. That's the danger. And Western Kentucky takes over on a turnover for look the for, second time. Look, look for a shot play here uh, off a turnover, get it to claim momentum. Maybe Lucky Jackson, maybe somebody up the middle of the field. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage out here to the, to the boundary, the bottom of your screen. That's Jackson on the 27 yard line. Story oh. to Walker up the middle. Short game, maybe a yard. He has been bottled up. That's seven carries for four yards tonight for Gage Walker. They've done a good job. Uh, they're daring the Hilltoppers to throw the ball deep. They have everybody in the box, one on one coverage on the outside. Uh, Coach Helton, Brian Ellis got to see that, uh, the, that he's got a matchup with these this young, inexperienced DB crew that, that UAB has. Second down and nine. Story to nobody. And could that be grounding? This a little bit of a miscommunication. Tyler Story again. Tyler Story needs to make quicker decisions with that ball. That ball needs to come out on his back foot. One hitch, get the ball out. He's, he's holding that ball way too long. Maybe it's a little bit of a, a scheme or something like that, but I, I think Ty Story's got to get rid of that ball quicker. And Coach Helton's got to recognize that and get the ball out of his hands. Ooh, big call. His intentional grounding against Story, who looked, based on how he threw it, like he thought he had a receiver over there somewhere. There was nobody on that entire right side of the field. It was completely vacant. And that's the second time. It looks like he's actually, now that I look back at it, he's, he is looking at that rush. So um, you can tell that big boys up front are, are kind of flustering Ty Story, getting him off his spot a little bit right now. They do get into the backfield quite a lot, this Blazers front group. Sixth in the country in sacks per game. They're fourth in all of FBS in third down defense. And this is third down and 15. Watch for the big D, D lineman to pin their ears back here. Western no Kentucky has converted four of six third down so far tonight. Jackson open, Jackson inside the 10, caught for a first down. Big throw, big time catch, big time throw. That's what you want to see now. I mean, I'm talking about this a fifth year senior receiver coming up on third and 15 and making a play. That's what we want, we want to see out of this Western Kentucky uh, offense. 
That was C.D. Daniels, true sophomore corner. The Blazers are very young in the defensive backfield, especially with injuries in the preseason to Bronte Harris, one of the best cover corners in the country last year. And then after the first game to Jarian Street, transfer from Ole Miss, a converted running back, both of whom would have played major parts in the UAB secondary. Watch for a pass here. Story looks left. Blitz comes. Jackson in the corner, overthrew it. Right call. Uh, man coverage. Corner was out, that, that corner route was out leveraged, and he's got to make that throw. Uh, Nose a little tight, tight of a window. Maybe Lucky Jackson a little tired from the play before, but uh, got to complete that one. Man coverage, you got what you want. Lucky Jackson has three catches for 44 yards, both game ties, and his next catch will move him into eighth in Western Kentucky history. He's sitting on 131 in his career. He's against Daniels again at the bottom of the screen. Zone coverage. They got, man, they, got, they got numbers up top here. Story keeps. Maybe a hold in the middle. A flag is down. Story down to the five where he's sandwiched. But the right guard, Jordan Meredith, is going to be called for holding for the second time today. He's matched it up against Garrett Marino, whom we said was a force in the middle for UAB, and he has demonstrated that so far tonight. That's what he needed. He had no other option but to hold him. He made a, a fantastic. Garrett, if he's one-on-one, -on -one, they are he is going to win that battle every single time. Consistently throughout this game, he's done that. Now, he comes out on this play, replaced by the redshirt sophomore Antonio Moultrie from Pensacola, Florida, in the middle, big 44 in green. I've a chance to Second and goal from the 19. Western Kentucky with penalties has reliably tonight turned goal-to-goal -goal situations into difficult spots. Pistol for the first time. Walker had a hole. It closed quickly, and Moultrie falls on top of him at the 15-yard line after a gain of four. This experienced defensive line for UAB is winning the battle up front. I like to, when I watch a game, I like to see what, what the first step is. Uh, and if, if, they, if it's going to be against from the offensive side, is that first yard being gained from the offense, or is it being gained by the defense? Right now, that first yard, they're getting pushed in that backfield of Western Kentucky, and they got to slow them down maybe with a different cadence, maybe with a different um, check, but they got to they got to slow them down. Does Western Kentucky throw it here and go for the end zone or run it again like that previous third and goal that was from outside I, the 10 I and can, take the field goal? I can bet 100 bucks that they're throwing this ball. Story is going to throw. To the flat, Simon. At the 10, he slips down, and it'll be another Western Kentucky field goal attempt in the red zone. This time, though, to try to take the lead, and because UAB used all of its timeouts, the Hilltoppers can run this clock down to right around two minutes before having to kick the field goal. Uh, good play by UAB. They just kind of take, made them make a throw down, make a throw to the flat, make a guy miss, and they swarm to the ball. That's a really good call, uh, defense coordinator. Munson already hit. From 35, he'll try from 28. Out of hold of his Australian putter, John Haggerty. The long snap will come from Jared Nash. Munson, got it. So Western Kentucky has twice got inside the 10 and twice had to settle for field goals because of costly penalties. But only 2.05 left now in this second quarter for UAB to manufacture something before the half at Western Kentucky for the first time has pulled ahead. 10 straight Hilltoppers points make it 13 to 10 in favor of the home side.